What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Young Legends Podcast, where we help you get the cheat codes to the game of life. I'm your host, Caption, aka Caption Red, and I'm so happy to put out this episode. Uh, I took a week off recently. Long story short, I was involved in a hit and run. Of course, I was the person who was hit. My car was totaled, but the good news is I'm okay. The accident could have been a lot worse, and everybody in the car is also going to be okay. Now, today I had different plans on what I was going to do as far as the episode that I was going to drop, but in light of recent events with you know the passing of an NBA legend, Kobe Bryant, I felt the need to memorialize him and also just to talk about all the things that I've learned just from uh, being affected by him. So, you know, Kobe recently was in a helicopter crash. And here's the thing. They should not have been flying in the fog. And I don't know whose fault it is. And it doesn't really matter whose fault it is. But I experienced this recently myself. Like I was involved in a hit and run accident. Yes, that happened. But also rain was a factor in the accident. and. If it weren't raining, the accident probably would not, would have never happened. And if it weren't foggy, then his accident probably would have never happened. And so I want y'all to understand that safety is so, so important when you live your life. When you don't have safety, you have nothing. And I just want y'all to be safe out there. Do not be out there uh, when conditions are bad. And, and if you have to be out there when conditions are bad, Make sure that you are exercising extreme care and caution, okay? It's a complete tragedy what happened to Kobe and his daughter and everyone else in that uh, helicopter. And uh, hopefully that'll be a lesson to all of us just to be more careful. Now, it's not coincidental, but recently, about three weeks ago, I actually posted on Instagram about how Kobe Bryant is my mentor when it comes to hard work. Kobe is a legend when it comes to working hard. There are multiple stories about him in the Olympics and also just in life in general. But there was this one story about Kobe when he was in the Olympics. He uh, hit his trainer up at like 3.30 in the morning and he was like, hey, can you come and help me with my strength and conditioning? And the trainer looked at the clock and it was 4.15 in the morning and he went down there to go help Kobe at the facility. And Kobe at that point was drenched in sweat. Uh, he was drenched in sweat. He was working, shooting, doing all types of things. And the trainer got with him. He worked with him on his conditioning and his strength. The trainer goes back to his hotel room and he sleeps. And Kobe's there shooting around. And the trainer just looks at him and he's like, hey, uh, what time did you get done earlier? And Kobe was like, well, what do you mean get done? And the trainer's like, well, what time did you finish? And he's like, oh, I'm finishing up right now. And he's like, are you kidding me? Like, you've been here this whole time? Kobe Bryant was there for seven hours before practice even began. And he was going to do a full practice with the team after his 4 a.m. to 11 a.m. workout. Um, so anyways, Kobe... He's practicing like crazy. He's showing the work ethic. And he developed this work ethic when he was in high school. When he was in high school, he would show up to practice at 5 a.m. Uh, and then he would stay to practice until 7 p.m., right? That was Kobe and his work ethic. He was the first person to, to show up to practice into the gym and the last person to leave. That's Kobe Bryant. And during this whole training camp and uh, the Olympics, the other NBA players were astounded with Kobe. Now, you got to think about it. All the other Team USA players are elite athletes, the top 20 basketball players in the world. And D. Wade, Dwayne Wade, saw Kobe's work ethic, and him and all the other players were like, we need to reevaluate what we're doing because this dude is out working us. He's out hustling us. And we can't continue to train the way we do now that we've witnessed Kobe Bryant and his training regimen. 
And so literally, Kobe Bryant changes Team USA basketball. He made the players better. And he made the NBA better as a whole because of his work ethic. You know how it is when you're around someone who inspires you and works really hard, whether it's a gym or anything else, you level up, right? And that's why it's so important to be around people who are going to challenge you and inspire you and so on and so forth. And Shaquille O'Neal talks about this in many different interviews. He said Kobe Bryant was like a scientist when it came to training And Shaq was not. Shaq was just a really gifted, naturally talented athlete who was lazy compared to Kobe and even maybe compared to some of his other NBA uh, colleagues. And that's actually part of the reason why Kobe and Shaq didn't get along because Kobe was like, why are you out of shape? Why are you not working hard when I'm busting my tail? And, you know, the rest is history. Of course, they split up and go their separate ways. Phil Jackson talks about this. Phil Jackson talks about how Kobe worked harder than Michael Jordan. Kobe was the hardest working dude in the NBA. And when Kobe was a 21-year-old ball player and Michael Jordan at that point had retired, he had Michael Jordan come and talk to Kobe about being patient. And when Jordan shows up to have this meeting with Kobe, the first thing out of Kobe's mouth is, hey, I bet I could whoop your butt one-on-one. And Jordan laughs and he's like, hey, you probably could, young fella. But here's the thing. Kobe had this ridiculous confidence, but he had that confidence because of his work ethic, because he put in the hard work. Here's the thing. Everybody wants self-esteem, but what you need to understand is self-esteem comes from accomplishing things. Self-esteem is derived from hard work. And the reason why Kobe had so much self-esteem and confidence is because he put in the work like nobody else. All right, what else? Kobe always sought out mentors. He always was looking to learn. He reached out to Michael Jordan and he was like, hey, I have a bunch of questions about playing. I wonder if I could pick your brain. And Michael Jordan became a mentor to Kobe. And he even said in an interview, like, Michael Jordan usually doesn't share secrets, but he respected Kobe's chutzpah. He respected his hard work, and he knew he was about that life. And so Michael Jordan becomes his mentor, his big bro, as he would say. Uh, Phil Jackson, of course, was a mentor of his. Jerry West was also a mentor of his. But it went beyond basketball. Like Kobe would be out there, and he was like, hey, who else can I learn from? So he would cold call people like, Oprah Winfrey, Ariana Huffington, the CEO of Apple, Tim Cook. And he would just pick their brains about all sorts of different things because he realized that he had so much to learn from them. There's this one story about a billionaire investor who he would call and pick his brains or he would text him sometimes at two, three in the morning. And he was just so full of questions and so inquisitive and curious. And He was always asking questions and he was always learning. And that's what you got to do if you want to succeed in life. You have to be teachable. You have to realize that you don't know anything or that you don't know everything and that there are people out there who can have the information and they can give you that information and they can teach you and they can show you the way and you got to reach out to them and just seek knowledge. And he even says in an interview that, hey, you don't even need people to be alive to learn from them. I mean, that's why he read so many books. He was like, yo, I'll pick up a book and I'll learn from a dead person because they still have information to share through their books. And I think that's why he developed the Mamba Sports Academy, where he taught young people how to become better athletes. I think it's why he started the Punies podcast, which if you have a family member under the age of 10 years old, Definitely put them on that because it's a a really good resource on achievement and self-esteem. And it's very, uh, very entertaining as well. He was all about teaching people because he had been taught so much himself. Uh, He wrote a book. You should definitely check it out. And one cool thing that I've noticed about Kobe is young Kobe versus old Kobe or older Kobe, right? When he was young Kobe, uh, he was very brash and not as cooperative and wise as he was when he got older. 
But I remember watching him in a game. It was the final game of the 2010 NBA Finals. He had just won his fifth ring. And as he was celebrating, he was like, where is the Spaniard? Where is the Spaniard? Bring him here. And he was talking about Paul Gasol. And he realized that Paul Gasol was a reason, part of the reason why they won the championship. And he was giving credit to someone who helped him achieve his goals. And he even said this in an interview that when he was younger, he would bark orders to all these older players and they would just look at him sideways like, who are you to be sitting here jawing at me like this? And then he realized that he had to curtail himself and not be so brash and not be so commanding and overbearing and so on and so forth. And because he realized that those people skills were important, he got along better with his teammates. And even as that was the case, he still challenged his teammates. He challenged them to be better. He challenged them to be tougher. And I think that's an important thing that we need to do in our lives to challenge the people around us, but also use good people skills. All right, so there's that. Also, Kobe was all about sacrifice. Kobe understood that at the NBA level, I mean, you're at world-class level and everyone is talented and everyone works hard. Not as hard as he did, but everyone works hard. And so there's a story about him reaching out to people at Nike and asking them if they could shave off two millimeters off the sole of his shoes so that he could have one one one-hundredth of a second faster reaction time. And that's not really a sacrifice as much as it is his attention to detail and his understanding of what it took to be the best. And, you know, it's funny because Kobe's name is from a Japanese beef. It's called Kobe beef. His parents named him that when they were in Japan, but he didn't eat beef. All he ate was lean meats such as fish and chicken. And when he was in high school, he gave up sugar and he didn't eat pizza and he would eat five to six salads a day. And that's what he did because he realized that being a champion, being an elite level, one of the greatest of all time, requires a lot of sacrifice. And so he would do things like icing his knees on a daily basis to preserve his knees. He would do things like getting acupuncture to prevent injury. He basically ate, slept, breathed the game of basketball. And he gave his body to the game of basketball. We see this through his history, how he played through pain, how he played through injuries, how he persevered. I think the best example of this is when he tore his Achilles, right? Which is a terrible injury. He tore his Achilles, he gets up and he hits two free throws. Who does that? Nobody, nobody does that. That, I think that's the only time in history that has ever been done. But he had this ridiculous, I wouldn't say a high tolerance for pain, but he had this understanding that that dealing with pain was important in winning. And so Kobe showed that sacrifice is just a part of the game. When he got injured with his Achilles, he just showed so much grit with his recovery. And at first he was sad and frustrated, but then he was like, hey, stop feeling sorry for yourself and get at it see this as a new challenge, see this as the silver lining of something that could be great. And so he recovered and he had a a record recovery. He was recovered in eight months from an Achilles injury, which is astounding. Like nobody has ever recovered that quickly from an Achilles injury, but Kobe put in the work and he, he did everything he needed to do to get a hundred percent better. And I love this one quote from Kobe where he said, if you see me in a fight with the bear, pray for the bear. And I think that's just quintessential Kobe right there. Never say die attitude, ridiculous, just a, a crazy tough mentality, which leads me into the next point, which is vision. Kobe had a vision when he was 13 years old. He was like, one day I am going to be one of the greatest of all time. One day I'm going to win multiple championships. And so when he was a 13-year-old, 
He was playing the long game. He was thinking about not just getting good as a 13-year-old, but as a 14-year-old and a 15. And, and he kept working on his game, knowing that he was playing the long game of becoming a professional basketball player. And that's something that we should all think about. Most of us won't be professional basketball players. Pretty much everybody that's listening to this podcast will not be a professional basketball player. But what do you want out of life? What is your vision? You have to create a vision to go after and you have to be willing to give everything to get it. And you always have to have your eyesight on that vision in order to get that vision. And one of the things that Kobe did as he had his vision is he started creating goals, little goals, and he became really goal oriented. And that's what he's all about. And that's what the Mamba Sports Academy is all about. And one of the things he says in the Mamba Sports Academy video is we take responsibility for the work required to achieve. Our goals are our own. Are you taking responsibility for the work required to achieve? And are your goals your own? Are you taking ownership of those things? And are you understanding that there's a process to all of this, that it takes time? But if you're willing to put in the work, that eventually, not today, not tomorrow, but eventually you will get there. Having a long-term vision. It's not about the game today. It's not about the day today. It's about how we are getting to our long-term goals and having a long-term view of what you ultimately want. Which brings me to my final point, which is the Mamba mentality, which is a lot of the things that I just talked about, but even beyond all of that. The mama mentality was that success is having a growth mindset. That's why he worked so hard because he had a growth mindset. He knew he could get better. And one of the things he said in an interview was, how do I get better than I was yesterday? And to ask yourself those questions to get better incrementally. And that's what the Kaizen method is. I covered that in the episodes on building habits, uh, which were some of my first episodes of this podcast. But getting better incrementally, getting better little by little by putting in the work. Kobe was really big on getting better, on working smarter, not harder, but also working hard, right? But making sure that you don't, that you work on things that are actually going to make you better. And what are the things that are going to get the most optimal results? One of the things that Kobe did with his Mamba mentality is he would research his opponents. He would study film of his opponents. He would study film of himself. He would study film of himself at halftime. He would show his teammates some film, helping them to understand how they can get open, how can they take advantage of screens and so on and so forth. And he was always improving himself. That was the one thing about Kobe and about all elite athletes. They're always improving themselves. They're always watching film. They're always seeing how they can do better. Uh, there's this story from the uh, Olympics where Leandro Barbosa, who was a beast basketball player, was averaging 27 points a game. And Kobe signed up and he said, hey, I'm going to guard him. And so he studied a bunch of film on Barbosa and he held him to four points on one of seven shooting. And he just owned that guy. And he changed USA basketball with his work ethic, with his dedication to excellence. And that's another thing that he says that the Mamba mentality is that we're constantly learning, we're constantly moving, and we're constantly improving. Now, understand this, that Kobe Bryant was not the most talented ball player as far as raw natural ability goes. He has this whole story where he was ranked number 57th in the high school rankings, and he was just taking people out. He, had, he called it a kill list. And he's like, I'm taking people out until I'm number one. And by the time he was a senior in high school, he was number one. And when he came into the league, he averaged six and a half points a game. So he wasn't that rookie that came in and dominated like LeBron James. Uh, when he came into the league, he didn't have humongous hands like Michael Jordan does. He didn't have a 48-inch vertical, but 
he worked really hard on his game to make up for the fact that he was not the most physically gifted athlete in the world. And that's something that we can all take to heart to be like, hey, I know that I don't have all the natural abilities, but I know that what I can do is work hard to make up for those things. And I'm going to leave you with this quote from Kobe Bryant, where he says, whatever you do, do to the best of your ability. And I love that quote. I love Kobe Bryant or the example that he set. And I know he wasn't a perfect person, but the example that he set as a champion, as a family man, and just as a person that shows all of us what we could end up becoming if we really tried and put our heart, soul, and mind into our work, whatever that may be. Um, shout out to Kobe Bryant. Shout out to the awesome things that he did. And I hope that we can all take that to heart and say to ourselves, what are the awesome things that we can do? And to start doing those awesome things now. So uh, thanks so much for listening. Uh, I appreciate y'all. And also, just a housekeeping note, um, we are moving the podcast to a new host. So if you lose the podcast, you lose subscription, then uh, just go back and resubscribe. That shouldn't be the case, but if it is, uh, go back and resubscribe. Okay, cool. So that's it. That's the end of the podcast. I hope you're doing well wherever you are. And until next time, peace out.